Conscious capitalism is an idea, a movement, an approach to conducting business, and an organization dedicated to advancing all of these. Conscious capitalism comes to life as it's applied to business, nonprofits, and other organizations. It's about more than business as it advances the power of business to serve humanity. Four core principles guide a conscious business or other organization that practices conscious capitalism. These four principles, higher purpose, a stakeholder orientation, conscious leadership, and conscious culture, support entrepreneurs and business leaders to create value for all, building trust and creating healthy, resilient, sustainable businesses. We have made immoral behavior far more profitable. We have, in the course of the changes in our society, been establishing greater and greater incentives on people to behave in ways that most of us regard as immoral. It's new, it's automatic, it dictates, records, seals, sterilizes, stamps, and delivers in one operation without human hand. In the last 50 years of, of business, companies are rewarded based on one metric, and that is profit. 20th century model of capitalism has one rule in its operating system. Get the big money, you make a pile and raise a pile. We've reached a million, two million, five million. Watch us grow. Wow, this is, this is great. This is a good ride, isn't it? Are you going to do something about it? Are you going to do something about it? Oh, okay. Well, then let's just keep going. But no, there's some people who will stop and go, no, guys, let's check this out. So there was a meeting in Gold Hill, Colorado of about 40 people. It included entrepreneurs who went into business to try to make a difference. We're in an era of more transparency, more information. They can't get away with uncareful behavior anymore. They need to be very, very diligent about how they serve the communities that they work in. There's a real need to reinvent capitalism. We need to redefine what corporations are. Why not take business as a tool to achieve a more progressive result? The purpose of running this great business is actually to have that impact in the neighborhood. Gone are the days of organizations taking and not giving. When the penny dropped that entrepreneurship was actually a really powerful social change thing, I sort of thought of it as like you're kind of like a pirate on the high seas of capitalism. So get paid, do good, and this is your legacy. Seems really cut and dry, right? see that there's a lot of examples where the pure profit motive really creates a lot of trouble. By the way, the CEO of Wells Fargo Stumpf, as a result of the behavior of his employees and the um, overselling of these fake accounts, he earned <coughs> over $200 million in shares. Over $200 million in shares. Do you think one penny of that came back after he was found out? Of course not. On top of that, he's already getting millions of dollars for his salary. And so now on top of that, he has many other millions. And he terminated 5,356 employees. How many lives did he impact by his inappropriateness? Can you believe that? 5,000. Talk about impact to the community. All right. So Conscious Capitalism, as John Mackey had said, Conscious Capital um, Inc. is a nonprofit cultivating the theory and practice of conscious capitalism through events, presentations, social media publications. The concept is business is good because it creates value. It's good because it's ethical because it's based on a voluntary exchange. It's noble because it can elevate our existence and heroic because it lifts people out of poverty. Um, you know, these are the concepts of quality approach to work. This is the concept of conscious business, and it's predicated on these four principles here. The purpose, the stakeholder orientation, the conscious leadership, and conscious culture. 
So let's um, look at this. Um, Darden School of um, Management Professor Ed Freeman had said, uh, in terms of higher purpose, we, re we need red blood cells to live the same way a business needs profit to live, but the purpose of life is more to, um, than making red blood cells. The same way the purpose of business is more than simply to generate profits. By the way, Ed Freeman spoke on conscious capitalism this time last year at the university. Um, so, higher, let, let, let's talk about, uh, let me jump into this real quick. Stakeholder orientation. Um, unlike some business professionals that believe that the shareholder is the only stakeholder that they need to be concerned with, in conscious capitalism, the stakeholder is anybody who is a part of the business ecosystem. And what do I mean by that? It recognizes that the stakeholder is as much the client as the employee, as the vendor, as the supplier, as the community, and society at large. They are all stakeholders in the bigger economic system of that business. And really they operate from this win-win mentality versus the com competition mentality, I win, you lose. And so let's think about that concept um, in terms of the millennial generation just for a second. All right. Um, the millennials grew up collaborating on everything they did. They all worked on teams. They worked in groups. Okay, that's how they were um, brought up. That model of collaboration is much more akin to how they've been conditioned up to this point. Right now, this uh, win-lose mentality is creating internal competition within organizations and creates all kinds of employee relations issues. So that has a, a conscious leadership component to it, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. Okay, stakeholder orientation, again, concept realizes that without the employees and um, the entire ecosystem, there is really no business. Um, so having balance of that. Conscious leadership, in terms of conscious capitalism, I want to focus a minute on this. Um, who's ever heard of servant leadership? A lot, of, a lot of hands up on that one. So the whole concept of servant leadership is um, depicted in a picture of an upside down triangle. Okay, picture an upside down triangle with a point at the bottom. That point at the bottom is the leader of the organization. And they are there for the purpose of serving the followers, to equipping the followers to achieve their highest capabilities so that everyone can rise. Okay, versus the very um, <coughs> traditional nature of most organizations where the hierarchy is different, where you have the leader at the top and everyone serves that leader, right? We've seen organizations like that have one. So the servant leadership mentality is very much akin to the conscious leadership approach. And this is a significant departure than what a lot of us see in our workplace today. This morning I had a, um, did a presentation in the Montgomery County Sherm on uh, succession planning. And so we were talking about that. Uh, and we were talking about some of the systems that uh, occur within organizations. Um, and I mentioned about uh, this ideology of the command and control, the traditional type of employment relationship, whereas I'm the boss. That's why. That kind of mentality, that kind of approach, that kind of um, demeanor and culture is such that it's positional power, and it's the it's the least powerful of all powers, positional power. Okay, you've not influenced anybody, but you've only been in um, that position, and by merit of that role, you're throwing your weight around. Well, conscious leadership is very different in the, um, from that because, again, it operates from that servant leadership mentality. But how many of us? witness and view and experience on a day-to-day -day basis traditional leadership mentality and traditional leadership roles. All day, right? All the time. We've got a few heads nodding back there. You're going to do it because I said so. I'm the boss. You know, we get some of that. And obviously, what, is, what does that do to the employee? What's that do to the employees? I'm sorry? Demotivation. Demotivation. Okay. So wait a second. You've hired these people to be as productive as possible. But then you're going to turn around and demotivate them? So 
how often do we stand back and look at the impact and the effect our behavior is having on the overall mission of the organization and how we're driving that mission forward? You know, when there's such a detachment between what we believe and what we see operating on a regular basis, this brings about our awareness to say, hey, we need to shift what we're doing. We're not getting the results that we're looking for by operating in this manner. We need to shift pretty quick. And so we've got a lot of work to do in this leadership concept. You know, if you think about this from the standpoint of um, the generations that are in the workforce right now, think about who's at the helm. Boomers, right? So, boomers came up during a particular time where it was very much a part of the ethos of the senior and veteran population to reach back and mentor the boomers, right? They, it, was a, it was very much a part and parcel of what they believed in doing. However, the baby boomers came up during a time where the economic conditions were a little bit different, and they were holding on to their job with both hands with a death grip. So they didn't have another hand to reach back to the Gen Xers, okay? And so as a result of that, we have an entire generation in the workforce that didn't receive that informal mentoring and guidance. And oh, by the way, it's also during the time in which we heard a lot of, training's a luxury we can't afford right now. The HR training budgets dried up, didn't it? Okay? And so we've got a whole generation that didn't get informal mentoring and guidance in leadership development, or formal. And now we've got another generation coming in the workforce. And who are they gonna get it from? They're not going to get it from the prior generation. They don't have anything to give. Okay, so we need, we're in a leadership crisis in this country. I mean, we only need to look at our political candidates to tell us that. <laughs> right? I mean, is that really the best we can do? Come on. So leadership is a real critical issue um, right now in this country. And for our competitive nature, if we're going to compete globally, how are we going to do that? operating from these kind of models. And that's why conscious capitalism is going to be so important. It shifts the approach of everything we do to make sure that those wins happen all the way around. It complements the entire ecosystem. 